stories now. Former Vice President Joe Biden has selected Kamala Harris as his running mate. The California senator is the first black woman to run on a major party's presidential ballot. Harris was a fierce rival of Biden during the presidential bid, her own bid that was, and she's since become a vocal supporter. The daughter of Jamaican and Indian immigrants, she has already made history, becoming the first African-American, first woman, and first Asian-American to serve as Attorney General of California. So joining us now to talk about that and more, Suzanne Chad, Associate Professor of Political Science at North Central College. Hello, Suzanne. Thanks for joining us. Hi, it's good to see you both. It's right. like, it seems like a couple of months ago we were trying to figure out and you know speculate who could be his choice. This really wasn't a foregone conclusion, was it? No, it really wasn't. You know, back in March when he said on the debate stage he was going to pick a woman, then there was much discussion about what characteristics that woman might need for various reasons. And then as we got a little bit further along, especially at the end of May after the George Floyd murder and more protests, it became apparent that this was a moment in time for Joe Biden and for the party to say, it's time that this ticket, this party, represents the people that it actually represents. And so we know that he vetted numerous women, um, um, white, African-American, and others. Um, and it just came down to, at the end of the day, who did he feel would best serve the needs of the ticket and serve the needs of the party? Talk about the significance of this pick. Obviously, an impressive resume, but also uh, an impressive personal story. Uh, this is an HBCU grad, for example, on the presidential ticket. Yes, you know, I think one of the things I would like the stories to continue to focus on, and I think they've done a pretty good job, is this historic moment, right? That we have um, a multiracial woman, a, a, a child of immigrants, who is now rising up to potentially um, be in the Oval Office first as vice president and then potentially um, running for president as a presumptive nominee in the coming cycles. And, and as you said, as an HBCU grad, this is historic and monumental in ways that um, role model to young girls of all colors and all ethnicities that you can do this and that it is something that is possible in the United States when maybe they hadn't felt that way before. So it's time to get down to the nitty gritty. Her record, of course, will be dissected. Yes, and in fact, we saw this is already happening today. Uh, President Trump at his press conference was already taking her to task for um, being, you know, too tough on, uh, too, uh, excuse me, not tough enough on crime, where her record as attorney general, the, the opposite she has been criticized for. And so this is, again, where we see uh, women and particularly people of color sort of stuck in this middle of not being enough things for enough people. This will continue to happen with her. Today, he called her a nasty woman again, like he did reminiscent of Hillary Clinton. Clinton, talking about the way that she questioned um, Justice Kavanaugh on his hearings. Uh, this is just the, just the beginning of what we're going to see over the next few months. No doubt, Suzanne, Republicans say that the left-wing mob is controlling Joe Biden, the Trump campaign, calling him Sleepy Joe and calling her phony Kamala. How is she going to respond? You know, this is a very interesting uh, a scenario that I, I'm curious to watch unfold. You know, typically vice presidential candidate can vice presidential candidates, excuse me, can kind of come in as the attack dog for the person at the top of the ticket. We saw Sarah Palin could do that for John McCain, for example. This is trickier for Kamala Harris as a woman of color to, to be, you know, overly assertive because she can be painted as the angry black woman, which we see for, for, for female candidates of color, black women, this is this is very, very challenging and happens frequently. And so for, for Kamala Harris, you know, we see how she how she acted when she was running for president, assertive, aggressive in appropriate ways, and, and taking to task those who um, who are speaking ill of the things that she believes in and the things the country needs. And I don't expect her to do any different as a vice presidential candidate. Black women have been supporting Joe Biden for years. Could this be a nod to them in these turbulent racist times? You know, I think I think yes. And I think that not only is it something that Joe Biden is doing, but this is something that the party has done, right? Typically, the party has a big say in who the person at the bottom of the ticket is. And I think that, again, the, the Democratic Party has been on the shoulders of black women for decades. Black women have carried Democrats into office across the country for decades, and they have never been given the appropriate credit for what they do for this country and for the party. And choosing a woman of color, a black woman specifically um, pays dividends for, for, for all of that time that they've been waiting. Suzanne, we have about 30 seconds left. Uh, Biden and Harris are mostly centrist. Uh, where does this leave the Bernie Sanders wing of the Democratic Party tonight? 
This is a great question. So we look at the way that voters have seen where the candidates are placed uh, with one another. And yes, of course, while Bernie Sanders is seen as the as as the most left. Elizabeth Warren, who's also seen quite close to him, we look at how people have, Democrats have viewed Kamala Harris and Elizabeth Warren, they're not seen as that much different. And so I don't think that um, it's it's going to be as challenging as we might think for, you know, Democrats who are true, true Democrats to come out and vote for the Democratic ticket. Suzanne, do you think you could see Susan Rice or any of his other VP candidates have a place in the A. Biden administration? Oh, absolutely. You know, I think Susan Rice is interesting because she carries that baggage from the Obama administration. This was brought up at a press conference recently, in fact, um, as a question to President Trump. But I think someone like Stacey Abrams, we also look at Timmy Duckworth, Keisha Lance Bottoms, uh, Gretchen Whitmer. I think all of them have a place in a Biden-Harris cabinet. All right, Professor Suzanne Schott, good to see you. Thanks for your time tonight. You as well. Take Thank good care. You. Be safe. Be well.